Hi, Rich Pisano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm going to do a hologram effect, and it'll use a lot of features of Affinity Photo, so I hope you get some good stuff out of this. I also did it in the desktop version, so you can check that tutorial out too. So let's get started. So I pulled in this car. You could pull in a car. You could pull in a box of Cheerios. You could pull in anything you want to pull in. It's just to show a product of some sort. And I did mask it out, you can see. And I did not do a very good job of masking it because you don't need to when you're doing a hologram. And I don't want to spend all the time about using the pen tool and masking it in this tutorial. I've done that in many other tutorials. So let's just take that car and I'm going to press down with my finger and say duplicate because I always like to keep the original and I hide the original. And now that I have that car, I'm going to the Move tool, and I'm going to shrink it down. Now what I need to do is change it to black and white. So we go up here to Adjustments, and I'm using HSL because really what I'm going to do instead is instead of going just black and white, I'm just going to desaturate it. I think it has a better effect. That adjustment should only be on that. So I'm going down onto the icon and to the right. And since it's already clipped now, I want to go up here and say Rasterize and Trim. Now that it's rasterized, I'm going to click Filters, Detect Edges, and I want to invert it. I know the desktop one, but let's try here. I think it's Adjustments, and there's a, there it is, there's an Invert. I need that inverted put right down because it seems to be a Live Invert, and to the right. Now that we have that, we don't want any filters on it for the next step because it has to be a flat pixel image. So I'm going to once again select that and go here and say Rasterize and Trim. And now it's just a flat pixel image. I'm going to add Fill Layer. And I'll leave the blue for now. I'm not keeping it as blue. I'm going to bring that below the car. So you can see that the car has, has white inside. I do not want white to be inside. So I'll select the car, go to Filters, Erase White Paper, if I can find it. The, there we go, Erase White Paper. Now it's see-through and it's just black. Now we can change the color of that at any time because we have effects. We go to Effects and we go Color Overlay and we select Color Overlay and we pick a different color. So we just choose any color we want and I think I am going to choose maybe one of these lime greens. We can change that color at any time. We'll go back to the fill layer, and the fill layer, let's make that, we don't want it blue, we want it to be black. What I'll do now is I'll duplicate it. I'm going to blur only the one below it and see if that works. See like that, much better I think, because it has a nicer effect on the one below it. I think Gaussian blur. And it gives a nice little bit of a brightness there. Not much, but just enough for what we might need. Okay, so let's try the next thing. Take a shape, make a rectangle, and let's say like that. And I want that rectangle to be a neutral gray. So we need to do a neutral gray because it works better with half tones. So I'm just going to pick a neutral gray there. So now I'm going to go to filters and half tone. GH. Where is it? Half tone. And I'm going to switch this from color to line. And I want to make the lines really, really, really small. Now, on YouTube, you might not see them as well. I'm going to make it as small as I can go. I just want to show lines in there. And I want the contrast to be way up. I have to make sure to hit the checkbox to say apply. And now that I've applied it, it's only a pixel image now because it's not wasn't a live filter. I didn't use a live filter. I want to make it large. And now I'm going to take this flood selection. I don't want contiguous on right here. So I turn that off. Make sure that's not dark. And I'm going to test. I'm going to check, try and click on one of the blacks. And I just looked to see how the black is all selected, the lines. So I'm going to keep that selected. And now I'm going to turn off that layer, and I'm going to select the car again. I'm going to go to Add Mask Layer. And now I'm going to press down again and do Deselect somewhere. There it is. And now you can see that I have these 
lines going through it because I have a mask on there. So let me try and bring this down small. So you're getting the idea of where I'm at right now. Now the car underneath, I might duplicate that one more time and just see if it makes it a little brighter. I like, because I like the glow and I think that glow is much better. And I'm going to select all those three and I'm going to group it and I'm going to call it, I'm going to change the name and call it car just so we keep ourselves keeping track of everything. What I'm going to do now is do another rectangle and this time I'm going to go from here to right about here, maybe even higher up, something like that. And I want that rectangle to be similar color to the car, one of the brighter colors. So I'm going to take this, drag it, and try and pick one of these bright colors. There we go. Okay, so now that I have that box, I think I'll convert it to curves. So let's go up to the menu up on top, and it says convert to curves somewhere. There we go, convert to curves. And with the node tool, I am going to kind of do something like this. Maybe even higher up. And maybe bring that down a little bit. And bring that down. Oops. Bring that down some. Almost to where the car meets up. And bring that down a little bit. And we want to blur that one too. So we can do effects one more time. And Gaussian blur. And see how much we can blur that. So that's kind of like what I'm looking for, and I think that's pretty good. And I might be able to lower that a little bit in. In more, like that. And I could lower the opacity if I need to, but that's on top. We, don't, we want that below the car. Now we need the lines in there. And once again, because I have a Gaussian blur, the lines will not work because it'll just blur out the lines. So I'm going to take that curve, and I'm going to click here and say rasterize and trim. So it is now just a pixel image. Now let's turn on this thing again with the lines. We're going to go much larger. Get the flood selection tool and make sure it, this is not on on top. We do not want that contiguous on. We want that off. And we select the black. And now we can shrink it down and hide it and go to that beam on the bottom and when you do that, you hit the plus sign and you say mask, mask layer. And now you can press down again and deselect. And now you have the lines going up, which I think looks pretty good. So one thing I can do, oh, once again, we must rasterize it. Go here and press down here and say rasterize. I would like to try, let's take a paintbrush. Here's a paintbrush. And with the paintbrush in similar color, Let's go to brushes. I'm going to try and find, I think, I think we have a brush, I think we have texture brushes that came with it. So I want to use things that came with it so that you don't have to worry about new brushes. I'm going to grab the second texture brush. I have no idea whether this is going to work. On top of that beam, I'm going to add a pixel layer. And that's what we're going to paint on and we'll see what happens. Let me try that first. Okay, undo. That's what I want. I'm going to just Maybe make it a little bit smaller, my brush. Whoops, that's the flow, which is this size. No, nope, this is my brush size. There we go. A little bit smaller. And I'm just going to go that way, that way, and maybe a little in the middle. I'm going to go to filters, and I think they have live filter for this. Uh, motion, motion. There we go. Motion blur. We want to bring it up. I like that. I may even go higher. I may want it to show up over the car a little. So now I'm going to take this and this, which is the beam below and the paintbrush and I'm going to group that and call it beam. So I'm going to go here and rename that one and I'm going to rename it beam. And we go back. So now we have the car, we have the beam, and we have the background. Everything else doesn't matter here. Those are just extra stuff that we use. That was where the lines were. We don't, we're not needing any of that anymore. We could take that beam and duplicate it. Press down, duplicate. And that's just a beam, and we can take that beam, and we can go like something like this, and make like it's coming maybe from a projector. And I think I'm going to select these two and shrink it a little bit. Oops, I got to hold my finger down to shrink it in proportion. 
Okay, so this beam now can go like that, like it's coming from off screen. And then we can take the car itself, which is the original car. I'm going to duplicate that, duplicate right there. And I'm going to bring that one over the black. And let's resize that. Let's make that beam go across like that. And actually under this beam, on this one beam right here, I think we need to put a shape. Let's try an ellipse. We'll go like right there. And we can maybe make that almost really light. Something in the green family though. And then we can go to effects, blur, Gaussian blur, maybe even bigger. That's what's coming from the car. We could do other things too. I think this beam on the bottom here needs really more blur because the lines are going the other way. So we can do that when we can do effects. Let's see if it works. Gaussian blur. I don't know if it'll work. Yeah, I think something like that. Okay, so now let's select everything except the fill in the back. Everything above the fill. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to group that. And now we can press down and say duplicate. And let's move that one over here. I'll show you why I'm going to do this. And then we're going to press down and say duplicate again. And I'll move that one over here. I'm going to select this one first. And I'm going to do adjustments HSL. You could do it different ways, but I'm doing HSL. And we can just choose a color. Now the problem here is it's showing the color is on everything. We don't want that. So we want that to go down and to the right. So it only affects the one that we're working with. So we can change the color of that. And I'd like to brighten the saturation. I think saturation is, should be high as it can be because it is a hologram and even a little bit more luminance. So that's the blue one. So let's select the next one and we're going to do it again. We're going to go to adjustments, HSL. And on this, let's go back to the layer. It has to go down into the group. Press down, whoops. Go down and to the right to be inside that group. Like that. So now it's in this group. You can see it's underneath there. That's the HSL. And with that HSL, we click it again. And maybe we want this one to be in into one of these families. And we can, again, saturate luminance. So that gives us all three like that. And let's, let's see what we end up with. So, and we'll leave the green the way it was. And that's what we ended up with. So that was my attempt at doing holograms. Here's what it looks like in the iPad version. And this is what I did in the desktop version. If you want to see that, just check my other tutorials. And I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please click like and subscribe and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.